Okay, so we were talking about the sarcomere. So this is the myosin filament and this is the actin filament with the green ones. Okay, so this is the actin. Okay, this is the actin filament and these are the myosin. Now, you know, you look at this, this is space where the actin filaments are ending. Okay, the space between this one, we call this space as, yeah, that is the H zone. So we call that as H zone. So it will be present from here till here. Okay, H zone. And always remember H zone is bisecting the sarcomere while it's contracting while while the scalpel muscles are con contracting there will be what there will be the bisection of the sarcomere okay now the thing is if this is actin filament and these ones are the actin filament whenever the muscle contraction will be happening whenever the skeletal muscle will be contracting they will be coming closer to each other so these actin filaments will be pulled towards the center of the sarcomere by the help of myosin filament okay we'll be talking about the cross bridging for example so they will be binding to this one and then cross bridge will be there and it will be bringing these actin filaments towards the center of the sarcomere so that contraction may happen okay and h zone is bisecting the sarcomere okay fine <clears throat> now these are the z lines over here okay this is the h zone this is the m line Okay, where are the A and I band? We are having an isotropic band, which is the darker band. We are having the isotropic band or I band, which is the lighter band. So, <clears throat> okay, this is the A band from here till here. Okay, this is the A band where the myosin is present. And this portion over here, so from here, this is the I band till here okay this is which band I band and this was A band okay I band is also called as yeah this is the isotropic band this is the isotropic band okay isotropic band also called as light band also called as light band okay a band is also called as anisotropic or darker band okay a band is anisotropic or darker band <coughs> okay anisotropic or darker band <coughs> fine so that is the structure if you talk about the sarcomere okay so I'm giving you the basic idea of what will be the happening uh, uh, while your muscles will be contracting. The, we are talking about the scatter muscle uh, contraction. So whenever you will be contracting your muscle, for example, you're contracting your biceps. Okay. <clears throat> these myosin filaments, these are the myosin filament, they are the actin filaments. There will be the cross bridging uh, of the myosin with the actin. You know, act, on actin, we are having a troponin site troponin and tropomyosin okay troponin is having site for the calcium calcium ions from the sarcoplasmic and uh, sarcoplasmic endoplasmic reticulum uh, there will be the release of the calcium ions this calcium ions will binding will be binding to the troponin okay uh, to the calcium site of the troponin tropomyosin will be fall apart and then there will be the cross bridging so this myosin head myosin cross bridge will be attached to the actin filament and that will bring it towards the center Whenever it will be bringing towards the center, contraction of the muscle will be happening. So your muscle will be getting shortened or your muscle will be getting longer? Shortened. shortened. So while you are contracting your muscle, your muscle is getting shorter, your muscle is getting longer? Shortened. It is getting shortened. So that is the concept. So your myosin head are bringing the actin filaments towards the center of the sarcomere. Okay. And that's how it is shortening the length of the muscle fiber. Okay, one more thing you generally talk about the isotonic and isometric contraction as far as muscles are concerned. Uh, look, if the size of the muscle is getting shorter, for example, or if the size of the muscle is getting changed, this is the isotonic kind of contraction. If the muscle size is not changing while contracting the muscle, it means this that is the isometric contraction. What can be the example? For example, you are uh, 
yeah you're pulling some kind of weight uh let's say i'm pulling some kind of table okay my muscle will be contracting that is the isotonic if i want to uh pull some kind of thing uh for an example <clears throat> you're lifting very heavy weight okay you're lifting very heavy weight beyond your capacity in that situation your muscle length will not be changing because object is not moving if the object is not moving will the size of the muscle will be changing no but you are putting your effort at the same time that will be the isometric contraction okay now you are having some let's say this is some kind of dumbbell okay and i am lifting that in that in that moment i am having isometric contraction now i have stopped contracting so this is the i uh, sorry that, that was isotonic and this is the isometric now again that is the isotonic and again it is isometric okay so isotonic isometric then again isotonic okay this is kind of contraction if the length is changing it means that is isotonic if the length is not changing then it is isometric contraction of the muscle understood about this one okay now let's talk about the <coughs> neuromuscular junction how the action potential comes so how the muscles are contracting and how the nerves are uh, conducting the action potential towards the muscles okay and how the muscle contracts fine so shall I rub this one So let's say <clears throat> this is one of the nerve fiber. Let's say this is the presynaptic cleft over there. Okay, and this is the postsynaptic, and in between that we are having synaptic gap. Okay, from physiology we know about this one. And you know, we are having the synaptic vesicles inside the presynaptic membrane. So, like these are the presynaptic vesicles present over here. Okay. And these presynaptic vesicles are containing acetylcholine. They are containing what? Acetylcholine. So this is the acetylcholine present inside them. Acetylcholine present inside them. Now what will happen? As the action potential comes, okay, as the action potential is coming, there are, there are the channels uh, which we call them as voltage gated calcium channels so calcium will be coming inside which ions are coming inside calcium ions calcium ions will be coming inside they will be causing what they will be causing of, of fusion of these uh, presynaptic vesicles with the membrane of this presynaptic cleft okay as the fusion will be happening acetylcholine will be coming outside with the help of exocytosis with the help of exocytosis the acetylcholine will be coming out from into the synaptic gap so this is the acetylcholine present over here now right This is the acetylcholine. At the same time, we are having acetylcholine esterase enzyme. Acetylcholine esterase enzymes are something like seizures. For example, these are the acetylcholine esterase. Okay, they cleave down this acetylcholine into acetylcoenzyme A and the choline. Okay, acetylcholine, acetylcoenzyme A and choline. If this is the acetylcholine, they cleave down with the help of acetylcholine esterase. They cleave down acetylcholine to acetylcholine and choline. Choline can be transported back into this presynaptic cleft, and acetylcholine A will be transported back to the mitochondria inside this synaptic vesicle. Acetylcholine A comes from the mitochondria. Choline comes from outside. Okay. There is a freight of acetylcholine. Then acetylcholine will be stored inside as with the help of calcium influx. They will be coming into the synaptic gap. And let's say this is not neuronal site over here. Now this is we are talking about the neuromuscular junction. So they, there should be muscle over here. Okay. So this is the muscle. So this is some kind of muscle over here now. Okay. So we are talking about which junction? We are talking about neuromuscular junction. Neuromuscular junction. Okay, we are talking about neuromuscular junction. So neurons means neuron is coming, muscular means muscle is the site, target site. So neuromuscular junction. Now what will be happening? Over there, there will be the receptors for the acetylcholine. There will be the receptors for acetylcholine. So let's say these are the acetylcholine receptor. 
so this acetylcholine will be binding to these receptors now as they will be binding to these receptors there will be the end plate potential epp there will be the initiation of end plate potential as there will be the initiation of end plate potential now everything is clear as there will be the initiation of end plate potential it will be moving on the sarcolemma okay what will be happening this is the muscle cell layer this is the muscle cell layer which we call as uh, sarcolem so it will be moving till the t tubules so let's say this is the t tubule over here present over there these are the t tubules and plate potential will move till the t tubules on the site of the muscle okay on the uh, muscle cell layer on the muscle uh, muscle cell layer these are the t tubules now what will be happening as the add and plate potential will be coming over here inside the muscle we are having what we are having sarcoplasmic endoplasmic reticulum so let's say this is the this is what this is sarcoplasmic endoplasmic reticulum okay they contain what they contain calcium <coughs> they contain what they contain calcium inside it so calcium is present inside this sarcoplasmic endoplasmic reticulum okay s e r now what will happen as the action potential will be coming as the end plate potential will be coming this calcium ions will be moving outside from the lateral sacs of this s e r these are the lateral sacs sac like structure is there these are the late, lateral sacs from there calcium ions will be coming outside inside the muscle okay now what will be happening this story is happening inside the muscles only now from here coming over here <coughs> calcium ions will be coming outside now what will be happening you know myosin are having myosin head okay and myosin head uh they are having the head like this for example this is the myosin head for example okay and they are having the site okay for example atp site okay on the actin filament also they are having the site this is the actin filament uh, i am let's say this is the actin filament which is like this okay over there this is the there is a layering of tropomyosin there is a layering of tropomyosin so this is the tropomyosin okay and over there there is the site of troponin also okay now let's say this is structure is troponin troponin is having the site for the calcium ions troponin is having site for calcium ions now on that side of the calcium ion this calcium ion which was coming out from ser they will be going to the troponin and that calcium ions will be binding to that so these calcium ions will be binding to this site of the troponin as the calcium ion will be binding this tropomyosin will be fall apart this tropomyosin will be fall apart now i am talking about the actin okay calcium binds to the troponin tropomyosin falls apart what will be happening there is a site for the myosin so myosin head myosin head let's say this is the myosin head now they can bind to actin once they will be bind to actin with the help of atp what will be happening so one of the myosin head is present over here and one is present over here they will bring this actin towards the center of the sarcomere okay so once again what is happening first of all you are having the neuromuscular junction over here acetylcholine is binding to its receptor then end plate potential initiation will be there end plate potential will be moving on the sarcolem till the t tubules as the end plate potential will be coming over here from the sarcoplasmic endoplasmic reticulum from the lateral sacs calcium ions will be coming outside now this calcium ions will be binding to its site on the troponin as the troponin as the calcium ions will be binding to the troponin tropomyosin falls apart as the tropomyosin will be falling apart there is the place for binding of the myosin head myosin head will be binding it will be it will try to contract the muscle by uh, bringing it together towards the center of the sarcomere and your muscle length will be shortened okay after that you know for contracting the muscle you need the atp for relaxing the muscle as well you need the atp 
okay it's nothing like that that you bring the atp you contract the muscle atp is gone muscle will be relaxed nothing like that if you will not use the atp muscle will be contracted only for an example if the patient dies okay if the patient dies after two to three days okay they are having the muscle rigidity why they are having contractions no atp no energy no atp no relaxation of the muscles okay that's why they are having the contraction of the muscles okay <coughs> fine so after that what will be happening with the help of atp again okay that bringing together this is the action of the atp only okay so atp will be coming over there phosphate will be removed adp will be removed they will be using the atp contraction will be happening again the atp will be used relaxation will be happening this calcium ions okay which was coming outside into the muscles they will be going back now they will be going back with the help of pump look they will not go back without any kind of energy you need the energy to send them back what is that energy with the help of atp you send them back and we are talking about sarca pump serca what is serca serca is smooth endoplasmic reticulum yes calcium atps atps means pump for example sodium potassium atps three sodium it uh yeah throws uh, outside and two potassium comes inside that is the atpa so we are needing the uh, atp right so that's why we need the atp for the for uh, making sure that these atpas are working we need the atp as well so with the help of sarca this calcium ions will be reused they will be sending them back into the ser okay so this kind of whole mechanism is called as excitation yeah excitation contraction coupling okay so this whole kind of scenario is called as excitation contraction coupling okay so this was excitation contraction coupling understood any doubt so till now we have talked about the skeletal muscles we have talked about the cardiac muscle we have talked about the smooth muscles we have talked about the nomenclature of the skeletal muscle uh, perimyosium endomyosium epimyosium and all these things muscle fiber muscle cell then we have talked about the sarcomere about the a uh, diagram of the sarcomere how it looks how the muscle will be contracting what is the isometric what is the isotonic contraction then we have talked about the excitation contraction coupling with the neuromuscular junction what the things will be happening then there is the concept of red muscle fiber and the white muscle fiber okay red muscle fiber and white white muscle fiber so red fibers will be having more myoglobin white fibers will be having less myoglobin okay so red will be having more myoglobin less will uh, white will be having less myoglobin red fibers they are for long walk for example marathon kind of activity in marathon you long for you run for the longer distances for example so you know <coughs> every kind of persons have different kinds of muscle fibers some kind of persons are having red fibers some kind of persons are having white muscle fibers okay absolutely that condition is physiological that is no uh, that is no pathological some kind of persons may having red one some may have white the, the the difference between that is some kind of persons are good in short running for example sprinting 100 meter race for example 200 meter race in that thing uh, you will be needing your uh, energy for a shorter period of time in that manner it if the person is uh, running uh, that much faster in short for the shorter duration that means they are having more prevalence of white muscle fiber <coughs> white muscle fiber which means less myoglobin okay they are having the white muscle fiber now white muscle fiber are present in the ocular muscle for example okay after that they will be tired for example you will be sometimes you do like this okay so at particular time you are doing like this so this this is what this is the white muscle fiber prevalence in the ocular muscles okay but you will not be able to do that for half an hour continuously okay obviously otherwise after that there will be ptosis right that is the thing for example that happens in myasthenia gravis because there is the a uh, relaxation of the muscles muscle par paralysis uh, on the other side we are having the red muscle fiber uh, they are for the longer distances uh, okay so we talk about the term called as endurance okay endurance or stamina okay so red muscle fiber they are having more endurance 
okay so they will be tired in longer period of time whereas white muscle fibers they will be tired in shorter period of time okay white muscle fiber they are more powerful okay so for the power work that is the white muscle fiber for the red one they are not so powerful but they are longer acting okay so that is the difference between red muscle fiber and the white muscle fiber okay so now we'll be talking about the mcqs for the mus muscular tissue